Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh? So come get some. Cromcon! Cromcon! Hey, we want to shout out to our sponsors, Daytona Beach Comic Con. If you are a fan of comic books, if you're a fan of comic book conventions, and if you like meeting comic book creators and getting comics and comic related stuff, then you need to make your plans to attend Daytona Beach Comic Con. This year's show is September 7th and 8th. Silverline will be there, so you should make your plans to be there too. We'll see you there. If you like comics and find yourself in the Orlando, Florida area, I mean, doesn't everyone come to Orlando at some point in time to see the House of Mouse? But when you're here, you need to make it a point to visit Coliseum of Comics, especially the one on East Colonial Drive. They carry Silverline Comics, even a limited edition Coliseum of Comics version of our comics. So, when you go, be sure to ask for Silverline Comics and tell them we sent you. OCD stands for Orlando Collector Deviants. OCD, Stephen Trish. They're a family of geeks who promote geek things, particularly those around the Orlando, Florida area. They're big supporters of Silverline, and we think you should be supporters of theirs, too. Go give them some love. If you are an independent comic book maker and you need to get your independent comics made, you need to look no further than Kablam! Kablam Digital Printing. They print our books, and they do a bang-up job. They're not only trusted by Silverline, but many, many independent comic book makers. Head on over to Kablam.com and see for yourself just how easy it is to have your comic printed by them and tell them Silverline sent you. Hi, this is Tim TK, host of That Silverline Show on Tuesday. Join us at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Tuesday night as we discuss pop culture and the joys of making comics. Hi, I'm Barb Gilbert, co-host of Silverline's Wednesday Wham. Join us each Wednesday night as we discuss comics, literature, movies, and anything else that may catch our attention. Hi, we're Owen Mann, and I host Silverline's Silver Sunday. Join me every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we make mine Silverline. Silverline, Silver Sunday. I have an echo going here. Let me fix it real quick. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Rolling Man. Today is April the 21st, and I can't believe it's already in almost over with April. Uh, I don't, I can't tell if we're having problems on Facebook or not. Um, yeah, they were having problems last Wednesday. Yeah, I, 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 I know, and I, and I haven't been able to find it. It looks like Mike has posted something, but that looks like the YouTube link. Yeah, I got it off YouTube. I couldn't do it off Facebook. Well, and there, there are Facebook users here, so but it's just a Facebook user, so I don't know, uh, I don't know what that is. Um, so hello, you Facebook people. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, so I am joined this week by. Mike W. Belcher, the that man and the mask guy. Say hi, Mike. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Uh, Mike will be uh, leading us a little bit tonight. Uh, so uh, you guys, Mike's Mike's the con guy, so he's got it all figured out. Going to give us uh, what the what's what. Uh, right next to Mike, we've got Mr. Thomas Formonti, master of nothing. Nope. Say hi, Tommy. I refuse to 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 know anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anymore? You're playing it. I'm playing it by ear from now on. <laughs> uh, mm. And we also have. Thank you, Pops. Pops says it's playing in the madness. So it's uh, it is uh, we're there. It is yeah, on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, uh, YouTube is working. Okay, but it must be not be on the Silverline page. So we'll have, yeah. I don't know what's going on. That's where okay. I see Silverline Comics. That's where I see us. Uh, on Facebook on Silverline Comics? Yeah, I'm wearing my Mickey right. shirt. I see it, yeah. I see you, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are also joined with, Mr. with by Mr. Roberta Conroy, <laughs> who has Hello. no title this time. We'll fix no. that. Oh, you can fix it. 
I'll fix that. What do you want to say? I'm going to give you uh, roller here wheel. Go. Here we go. Uh, if I can spell correctly. Yes. We're yeah. all we're all watching. Tail, semi. I know. Here we go. Colorist <laughs> Supreme. Oh, hey. Hey. That's Thank what I would have chosen. Well done. And uh, Roberto, are we going to uh, get to see mm -hmm. you uh, color some tonight? Oh, sure. I'll oh, some excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, last but not least, Mr. Tom Mason, San Diego Comic Con rules. It does. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, it does rule. It is an awesome. It is an awesome con. It has changed a bunch over the years. Uh, I am glad that I got to go in the '90s when I feel, and I realize I'm biased. I feel that was the highlight of the show, uh, the, at least the highlight of the time. Um, couple of uh, bits of news before we get on. Let me see how can I find this here. Uh, don't forget. Where did my screen go? Oh, okay, here we go. Don't forget, we have still got a uh, Ari Jones's White Devil uh, crowdfunding. There, there's, there's still a week to go. It has made, you can see this, we've got $941. It has made, but you guys, look, there is still artwork to be chosen. You can still get this, uh, uh, look at this splash page right here. Uh, that's probably, uh, look at that, page one. Nice splash uh, by Jackson Rennick. Uh, I think Mike Keeney is the. I can't read the, the credits from too small, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. Lots of in interior pages that you can get. Uh, just cool, cool stuff for you art collectors, art fans. So uh, get on over there. Be sure you've got seven days to do that. Um, also, I'm going to try to get out this week. Our printer. I got these on friday so i can i can now Ooh. ship look at this oh pretty uh, you actually me. got almost all of them on wednesday well that's true but i couldn't ship them because i didn't have them all so no because this, somebody messed up and this has the the actual in interiors this is not the uh, i had the remember i had a uh the fake. Uh, a <laughs> fake one i was showing you i can actually show you the interiors on this one so so this was the this is the bear and look at that i haven't even opened Beyond the Stars one yet. It's still wrapped in plastic. Mm. Look at that. Do right. they still have that new comic really smell? Shiny. Ah, they do. Mm. So, and then, of course, here are the uh, the couple of the regular issues for you. Uh, and, of course, we love we love Kablam. Yeah. So, Kablam's, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So, when are those going to be shipped out? Well, um, I'm going to aim to have them shipped out end of this week. Uh, that's my goal, but I am traveling this weekend to uh, Nashville because I'm going to do a one day show up in uh, Murfreesboro. So they post office in Nashville, I hear they do. <laughs> Very progressive place. <laughs> they, they 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 do. If I can get them, uh, if I can get them packaged up, I might take them out there. Oh, Co oh, Facebook users, Cody Johnson, Cody, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, where are you, uh, Cody? Are you watching it on the Silverline page, or are you watching it in the Madness group? Um, <laughs> uh, Pops gets uh, look at it. Pops is on YouTube there, and he's also on Facebook. It's the playing in the Madness. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, that was uh, that was it for my news. You, you guys have any news before we move on? No, I've got don't, don't, don't everybody speak Nothing. at once now. <laughs> well, no, the uh you you've got more news about uh Kalis number two gonna be oh shipping. Yeah, I soon. do. Oh, there so you go. I, I I I can't show you that one, but ah but I am happy to say uh for those of you paying attention, there are three books that are available on on uh, I could say newsstands <laughs> on in comic yeah, yeah. shops. Three, three, three issues available in comic shops. Of course, you've got the the first issue of Kalis, and then you've got uh, Trump's one and two. Both uh, Kalis uh, two will be, will be uh, shortly. shortly. Kalis two will be uh, shortly. I can't remember the date for that one. Uh, dates all run in my head. That if I don't have them all in front of me, like like this little lovely list here, uh, then I, I don't I don't remember them. So uh, we're we're in good shape for all of them. 
Uh, nothing's in danger of being late or anything like that. But yeah, Kalis 2 should be at the printer um, within the next couple of days. Is all I can say. Should, should, hopefully, but before I go to Nashville, it will be uh, in the printer's hands. And so we should still be in good shape for that. So yeah. Uh, Roberta, I'll keep an eye on whenever you mm -hmm. decide to share. I will. Uh, I'm about to. Yeah. Okay. You Working just. Uh, Whenever you do it, I'll pop it up there, uh, and then we'll probably ask you something about it. So um, so tonight, we're talking about con life. I'd be hustling. Uh, this is part of, this is kind of the last of the episodes that uh, we did in, what month is it, in March? In March, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we didn't, we didn't get to, to make this one, and so we got, uh, it got bumped back a little bit, but... Uh, I'm just going to let Mike take over. He's had, he's kind of had some things on his brain that he just kind of wanted to talk about. And this is another one of those. So Mike, I'm just going to, I'm going to hand you the baton, right? Right here it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was, this was kind of the, the end of the series that we were, that we were doing in March. The, the idea of, you know, we, we've taken the book and we're, we're done with it. We're, we're, we're ready to take it to the masses. And I just thought, you know, a good little conversation about all our experiences with con life. You know, the frustrations, the, the benefits, the good parts, the bad, you know, it, it's 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 a very multi thing that I've learned with cons. It, it can be it, it, sometimes it's, it's what you make of it, but it's also the environment. And, and I was surprised by a lot of things that when I started doing cons, you know, I, I had certain expectations and, you know, some were met. <laughs> Some were more than I was expecting. Uh, so, you know, it, it was, I was curious what everyone else felt about it, too. You know, because I, I feel like uh, along our publishing journey of our creations, the con life is a factor. It's Absolutely. A factor. And well, so, so uh, I, yeah, wanna, a big part. I wanna toss this in, Mike. And 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 this is this is not a, a requirement for anybody, but you know, one of the things that 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 um when I hear people talk about conventions. One of the things I always ask is, well, because somebody come back and say, oh, I did really well or, oh, I didn't do that well. Well, <laughs> what does that mean? What does that yeah. mean? Exactly. What does that mean? You know, because I have different definitions of, of well for different shows. Right. Um, not not every show is equal. So uh, I'm actually going to uh, when it becomes my turn, I think I'm going to I'm going to toss out some real numbers. Uh, and of course I don't have any, I don't have access to any of them right now, but I can, I'm, I'm going to give come kind of approximates, um, because I don't hear that. I hear creators go and say, Oh, I did to this show. And I sold lots of books. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, you know, I'm hoping Tom and, and his, uh, his vault mm. of her memory there can, can, you know, even harken back to some of the, uh, the Malibu, uh, uh, and certainly it's, it's at a show like San Diego, what some of the sales were. Yes. I'm ready whenever, but I don't want to be the lead because. Well, I, uh, well I'll, I'll take lead in. All right, so so um, so for me, I, the the when I think about sales, right? The I heard someone say one time that they they sold out of all the books they had, and I'm like, okay, well, how many did you bring, right? Because I don't always I take. To. To, <laughs> I, yeah, well, and that's the thing, I don't take a whole lot of copies to, to the, all the shows that I go to because, well, in my experience, I'm just lugging books around back and forth. And so, um, so I have, what I try to do, like if I were to go to a show right now today and take, take what I have, I would take anywhere from 10 to 15 copies of my newest book. Okay. Whatever that is, my newest thing, the thing that I want to lay out in front of everybody and, and kind of push on them, 10 to 15 copies of that. If it's a second or third or fourth issue of a of the miniseries or something like that, I'm going to try to take uh, a little more than half of that number for the next issue. So let's say I'm, I'm taking Trump's number three. I'm going to take 15 copies of Trump's number three because it seems to be uh, uh, it seems to be kind of uh, moving at the shows. Um, I'm going to take eight copies of number two, number uh, I'm sorry, number one and number two. Right, because uh, well, I might take more copies of number one because people like to get number ones, right? But you, I don't expect to sell uh, to to sell all of them. Now, for some of my other books, I'm only going to bring five copies, right? If I had 
oh, I don't have it on my wall. It fell. My 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 comics fell back here, and I haven't been. I uh, just haven't put it on the back on the wall. Um, like if I had copies of my original run of Cat and Mouse, I would only be bringing like two and three copies each of those because they're not going to sell, right? Those are older books. Not people people aren't looking for them anymore. Um, they just they just they're not going to move. So the, what about? Yeah. What about stuff like what about trades or what about original art or what about I, you know, we'll the, see, the I don't I don't uh I don't carry any original art. Obviously, I don't I don't I don't have any of that. Um or or the let me let me rephrase that. I do have some original art, but the original art that I have was gifted to me right. and is generally not something that I, I want to part with. So I'm not being the artist and, and and participating in that, I don't get the art. Um so I don't I don't I don't bring any of that. But the trades, I, I, I will take trades, but I will only take about five copies of each of the trades as well. So what, um, and what about, do you take it? So it's, I'm going to say it's easier, but I know it's not. It's easier for an artist to sort of bring their art. So what does a writer bring or an editor? Do you bring your scripts? Do you bring, you know, what at, one, at one point in time, I, I did start bringing scripts. Um, I found that people flip through them more than anything. And they're like, Oh, this is kind of neat. Oh, that's cool. I think, I, I think I carried scripts for about three years. Um, and I think I sold maybe four <laughs> yeah. and I, I think I had 10 bucks on them, uh, something right. like that. So, so it wasn't, you know, they weren't extremely pricey. Uh, so I just decided it wasn't worth me carrying, uh, wasn't worth me carrying and lugging around. Um, right. And which today is kind of nice because we get to use the now we get to use those as uh, uh, um, uh, as stretch goals for our hey look if we can hit this fund everyone gets a digital copy of this of this uh, of this script so so that comes in real handy um, the most com I'll say this the most comics I have ever sold at a and this is this is as far as I can remember all the way back to nineteen eighty you know nineteen eighty uh, eighty eight. Uh, the most comics I've ever sold at a single show show was when I went to MegaCon and I had Diana sitting right beside me. We sold 55 copies of Tiny Number One. Okay, that's the most. Good. That's the most single. Oh, I thought it was great. Right. Here's 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 my only problem with that is that uh, I was pushing the heck out of that book. I mean, I was I was I, people coming by. I'm like, hey, look at my comic book, right? Uh, and, and of course, Diana sitting there. And, and for those of, of you who might not uh, recall Diana, Diana is a, a younger, attractive female artist. Uh, certainly, a very talented artist, but she also happens to be a younger and female. And so, people were stopping to look at her art, and then they were picking up a copy of the of the comic. Uh, it just ha it, I, I, the way I sold the last couple of copies. Is was was on the final day. I, I literally people were walking by. I'm like, hey, help me sell out of copies. Of, I've never sold out of anything, so please buy a copy so I can say I sold out. And believe it or not, like five minutes before the show ended, and I still remember who she is, and I don't know if she ever listened to any. I get a message from her occasionally. Molly Tees uh, is a cosplayer. She stopped by. She said, "I want you to be able to say you sold out." So I'm going to buy your last copy. So <laughs> so she bought the last copy and I was able, it's the only thing I've ever been able to eat to, even to this day, it's the only thing I've ever been able to say I sold out of, of this book that I took to the show. So, um, what, so what do you, what do you consider a success then? Because it's easy. I think it's easy for people to lose money at a show. Yes. yes. And slowly go bankrupt as opposed to, because sometimes you can sell out. I brought... I brought all my books. I sold all my books out. I still lost a ton of money, and now yeah. I have to go back to my job. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that's one of the things. Uh, I, I think it's one of the struggles. Um, I, I know a lot of folks have heard me say, um, "I don't think if you if you if you're putting me on your guest list, I shouldn't pay for the table, right? That's right. just uh, that's just something I've I've been of the opinion of for thirty years." Um, if I come to you and beg to be at your show and you're like, Hey, I don't have any room for any more guests, uh, but you can buy a table. Well, then that's on me if I want to, to purchase a table or not. Right. Right. Um, I generally don't do that because I under, because where tables used to be 40 and 50 bucks, 
I don't know that you can buy a table for less than, you know, 100, 100 bucks, 120 bucks at, at some of these certain for a one day show. For, yeah, for a one day show. And, yeah. and, and you're not even sure how many people are, are going to show up at that one day show. And so for me, those are not worth it. Uh, it's not worth it for me to spend that money because I can't I I can't do the math that quickly. Someone else might be able to. I got to sell a lot of five dollar comics to pay for, you know, one hundred and twenty dollar table gas to the to the show, a hotel room. If it's not in driving distance for at least two nights. Right. Drive down there, stay in a hotel room, uh, do the show. If it's a one day show. If it's a if it's a two day show, well then I got three nights of hotel. If it's a three day show, well then I got four nights of hotel. Okay. Um, you got to sell a lot of five dollar comics to to make that. Now I will say this has been uh, an, an added bonus of uh, sp spending more than a couple of years in the field is that you begin to build a library, right? So someone might come to my table and look at Trumps and go, eh, I don't I don't like Trumps. But this cat and mouse thing over here, that sounds pretty interesting. Tell me about that, right? And so this is why I don't carry, I, I'll still carry the, the box full of comics, but I only carry three to five copies of every issue because they're not, I'm not going to sell, uh, generally I'm not going to sell, you know, five issues of a single, of a single issue, uh, right. unless it happens to be something like tiny. Number one was new, right? And Deanna was right there with me. It all For me as a perspective on the writer, it always helps to have the artist with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Would you would you consider uh, the placement of your booth to be a factor too? Like, if you're between two artists, is that a better draw for you? Hmm. Um, I would because say that's a. Will stay and watch. I, I would say that's a better draw for me than being between two two Etsy shop tables. Right. Uh, and, and if you've been to, and this, or, you know, a two novelist or something. not in a, not in a, yeah, two novelist. Yeah. This is not an, an intentional, uh, uh, poke in that direction, but if you've got stickers that you're making and, and pins that you've made from your machine, from images you stole off the internet, yeah, they're and selling you're for a quarter a piece. Yeah. And, 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 and then you got, your pillows that you printed out on your home printer selling next door. I don't think that does me any good. <laughs> right. No, cause I do. I noticed I, cause I think some of the, uh, some of the guys at the small press booth in San Diego, they seem to be spaced out really well in terms of uh, where you want to go. And so there's not, you don't see the jewelry maker next to Sergio yes. Aragona, for example, you don't see. Fantastic. Yeah. You see other you see other artists you see artists next to artists next to writer next to artist and so I yeah. think that's well it's, 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 it's like an enclave of correct me correct me if I'm wrong but but San Diego has that 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 uh, there's like a, a couple of little aisles and it's just small press I, comic maker comic maker comic maker comic maker comic maker across the aisle from them comic maker comic maker comic maker yeah, comic. There's, like, there's several aisles of that there's like it's it's six short rows and the rows are about yeah. half of the length of a, of a full row. Yeah. And they're, they're back there in the back near the food <laughs> and maybe the six, seven, six, seven or eight rows of, yeah. of people. And they're all comic book makers. Yeah. And most of them are artists. Some of them are writers. Some of them are the writer with the artist at the booth. And, right. and their booth is just like packed. They've got the, the long sign that hangs down. Yeah. yeah. They've got, they got artwork everywhere. And yeah. you know they're dressed. Some of them are dressed as their characters. Yep. And uh, some of them are fantasy novelists, and some of them, some of them have zero personality, and some of them are like showmen. <laughs> In my opinion, that is fantastic because, and here's the reason: because the people who go there, they're looking for independent comics, right? Yeah. So, so uh, they might go. Randy Ronaldo, I know, is is there every year, right? So they yep. might go. Hey, I'm going. You even said Randy Ronaldo is one of your first stops. I well, go there. I go there on preview night, which is the Wednesday before the show officially opens, although it's just as crowded as regular day. Right. <laughs> and I, the first thing I do is I go to Randy because Randy, I know Randy has a new book every year. Yep. And I, I want that thing either before, and I want it before it sells out. But I also know, <laughs> and maybe other people experience this too, I know that I can go and I can see Randy and I can have five minutes of his time and we can catch up. And he, that moment doesn't get lost in the, the hustle of the convention itself. The next couple of days, yeah. Right, and it's like, oh, no, I meant to talk to that guy. No, I meant to talk to the guy. It's like, like no, I want to talk to Randy. Well, I want to see the new book. Yeah. 
I'm, it's like an appointment for me. Yeah. And then at San Diego, you don't, you don't, those important people that you want to talk to, you don't want to talk to on Sunday because they are ready to go. They, <laughs> yes. they are so yeah. tired of being there. And yeah, we're all right. just tired of, of being there. And also, and you, you don't really have a chance to talk to somebody during the show for a long period of time unless you have lunch or dinner with them. Yeah. So you, so there's the way I arrange it is there's the check in where it's like people I see all the time. I just want to check in, make sure everything's cool, see what their new thing is working on, and see what any show gossip they've heard because I'm <laughs> I'm that person. And then there's people that I want to have lunch with so we can have a longer catch up, and then there's people I want to have dinner with so that we don't have to worry about who we're talking about. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah. But see, I, I think it works for for so so when you go to see Randy, uh, and I and I, I don't know your routine, but when you go to see Randy, you are there with other independent comic book makers. If oh, yeah. it was if it was your desire to find others, all you got to do is just walk down that aisle or walk around the next aisle, and there are more people there who are making comic books as well. Yeah, because there's there's uh, uh, there's Andrew Peepoy who's there. Mm -hmm. He always has something new out, and he's always got a ton of Archie covers that he's done. Huh. And uh, there's uh, there's a guy named. Uh, I think it's Rick Bryant who has who always has new stuff out, and there's, you know, there's like there's like twenty people that I could, yeah, you know, I could chat with and never see the rest of the con that evening, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and if they're if they're mixed in with all the trinket sellers, uh, you 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 might miss them, right? Because I don't, yeah. I mean, God bless those people, but I don't have any interest in that stuff. And so, uh, right. And so if you're if you're sandwiched between two jewelry makers and a holistic healer. <laughs> chances are I've, I, I've i'm gonna I've miss you it. yeah right. yeah yeah I, I i wish more um i i wish more convention organizers would be more cognizant of that uh of that idea that fact yeah. yes i know mike <laughs> the, uh, yeah the, the uh, mike did it it was great because because i've been around a long time people know me to a certain extent, and I'm I might be at one person's booth, and somebody will yell, "Hey, Tom!" And, <laughs> yeah, and, and because they're at, they're at, you know two booths down, you know I'll I'll find somebody that way as well. Right, or people just happen to be walking by. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's that's true. You just bump into somebody. Well, that's the worst thing too, because you see people out of context, and they come up and say they don't introduce themselves or reintroduce <laughs> themselves. Yeah. It's like, hey, do you yeah. remember me? <laughs> dude come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> this isn't a game show <laughs> don't ask me jeopardy questions 400 points you can guess my last name <laughs> uh, uh. so, so when, go ahead go ahead now you go ahead i'm done no i was just gonna say so so for me if if um i, I generally look for the offer uh, uh, you're going to comp my table, uh, if, cause you're, cause, cause you're, you're asking me there or I've approached you and you want to want me to be there because, right. because I've done some comic books and you want to put me on your guest list. So if that's the case, you put me on your guest list, you you should comp me a table at the very minimum. Right. Right. Uh, d depending on, on where you are. Uh, and now I, I know a lot of creators ask for, I shouldn't say a lot. I know some creators, um, they ask for guarantees and, and I, I didn't know what a guarantee was until about six years ago when, when, uh, the walking dead zombie b beside me was talking about his and I said, what does that mean? And so he explained what a, what a guarantee means. Uh, I guess I've always kind of been of the, the opinion is like, look, you invite me there, you pay my, my, my cost, right? So that I, cause so that, so that's a zero balance for me or, or, or mostly zero balance to me. Selling books is on me then, Right. So, so if you get me there, you get you you give me a table, right? You've given you've given me a a, a place to lay my head at night, right? Um, I, I've you know I slept uh, I've slept in they haven't always been hotels. I've slept in some interesting places before. Tommy remembers Tommy and I crashed it uh, uh, with my sister when we went to Memphis, right? right. Um, yeah. But but you know we had a place to 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 lay my head and well and this weekend too. I'm my my daughter lives in Nashville, so I'm going to you know be sleeping. Uh, on my daughter's couch. Um, right. So, so, and, and this is one of the things I could tell the, the guy, Hey, look, it doesn't cost me. I, I don't need a hotel room. Right. If you can give me any money to, to offset this really expensive gas, that would be great. And then they either do or they don't. Right. Right. 
All right, so you work a deal. Yes. You, have a, you, you make yeah. a you make an angle. There's an angle there. Now, do you have do you because I know some well some of the small cons like the one day cons don't mm -hmm. don't have the infrastructure for this, but right. Sometimes part of it is, uh, you know, I'll also be on a panel. Yes. Yes. Well, one of the, one of the things that's worked for me uh, in the in the oh the last six years or so is uh, I I will try to uh, if, if someone you know reaches out to me or if there's a show I want to do uh, I'll reach out to them and I'll say they'll say hey look but you know I can't really I can't really afford a, a hotel room or anything like that I said I usually say what if I can get an artist to come up with me and I'll call hey Tommy can you come to this show or this day. Tommy and I, Tommy and I will split a room, right? So look, you get both of us. We'll share the room. We each need a table, right? Tommy needs a table and I need a table. And then we can share the gas cost. That way, if you, you know, pay our gas up or, or get us a vehicle, we can share that vehicle and you get both of us for the same price. I found a lot of luck in that because a lot of, a lot of times they're not, no, no, well, somebody like me, right? They're not, ah, I don't know, a hotel room just for you and gas or a plane or whatever. I don't know. Two of you? Oh, I can put. I, and you don't mind sharing a hotel room and and the 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 the, the trip expense? Yeah, okay, I'll take you. Come on up. So what I'm what I'm hearing is one, have a good relationship with your children so you can sleep on their couch. <laughs> yes. And, and two, have a buddy. <laughs> ha, yeah. hey, listen, having having a a con buddy, a travel buddy, absolutely. I I I yeah. I, I find I have found that to be. Uh, invaluable in the last. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I traveled with Jeff Whiting for a couple of years before Jeff decided to get out of comics, right. and then uh, the la yeah, and the last couple of years I've been been mostly traveling with Tommy. Yeah, I, I kind of find that it's uh you know I th I think my payment to get in is to do a panel also. You know, yeah. I think that's part of the yeah yeah. If they if they want it if they want me to do a panel and not all shows uh, have panels. No, yeah, some aren't set yeah. up to do them, but you know if, if you. You know, if you if you're gonna give me a room and some gas money, then of course I'm gonna do a panel or two. I'll be happy to, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. also another another good barter is the portfolio review. Yes, that's more, yeah. that's more time consuming. Yeah, but there you can always find there's mm -hmm. always ten people to the show who want to show you their art. Right. Yeah, we did that for uh, Daytona, I think, a couple of years ago, and uh, I think we only got like three or four portfolios uh, uh, coming up to us. Um, so it's a win-win. Yeah. Well, well, and see, so I'm doing a show um, in Kansas City in October this year, I think. Um, I don't have all the final details, or I, I, I would tell you all that. But um, uh, they're, 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 they're getting me out there. They're putting me in a, in a hotel room the, the night before and the night after. But as part of the – and they said, I could. You, they said, you can bring your books, but part of what we want you to do is we've got four, con, uh, four uh, panels we want you to sit on for the day. So they're really just kind of bringing me out to be on the panels. I'm gonna say absolutely, sure. You're look, you're you're paying for this, right? And you, you're getting me there. You put me up, uh, yeah. But I can still bring my books and sell, and that's what's you know actually probably selling books right after a panel is probably more effective than sitting and at a table. Them up in the panel, sure. yeah. 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 Can you? Because if you, it's it's better. I, I San Diego doesn't let you do this, but it's I think it's a better idea if you have the books with you at the panel. Yeah. Than if you direct people back to your booth. Yes, because how many of them are actually going to go back? Some will, absolutely, but but, yeah, but they get they get distracted easily. Yes, yeah. yes, and because kind of I mean because it's I mean it's such a big show, right? You get lost. <laughs> and, it's exciting, yeah. and there's people dressed carrying swords and stuff, and it's that's uh, right. Yeah, there's, there's Gray Wolf people. says, "Hey, a chat. What's, What's up, Gray Wolf? Good Gray to see Wolf. you here." <laughs> um. Ooh. So. I think that the that, that, uh, that kind of answered the question, didn't it, Tom? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Who's next? I think Mr. Belcher, who since he brought up the topic, should. Uh, you know, well, you know as far as you know, as far as sales of the show, I mean, the way I do, I mean, I'm, as a person who has to pay for a table, because you know, I have no credits that you know most con, uh, guys who run cons want. So I've always paid for tables, and I, yeah. I usually it's within driving distance. Yeah. And as far as sales go. It depends on the con because, you know, until you kind of establish them, it's like with Pineapple. I got to the point with Pineapple, I knew basically how many books I needed every year for, because I had a, a group of people actually toward, you know, last year that would come for a new issue. Yep. So they came I for you. Yeah. You know, so I, I knew what to build up. And then the last year or two, I started really putting out the original art. You know, I don't sell prints, but I do 
put the art out. And, you know, it, the art is what sells and what pays for the table typically yeah. in my expenses. Yeah. Because yeah. unfortunately, the, the, you know, unfortunately, the, the books don't. I mean, yeah. it's just uh, depending on the show. Now, I did a show last year in Northern Kentucky that I sold a ton of books. I, told, I, told, uh, I sold a ton of my books and I sold a ton of Silverline books. Nice. And, uh, you know, I was completely surprised because it was like a 60 table show in a college on a Saturday on a very blustery weekend. And, you know, if you'd looked at the attendance, you wouldn't have thought that many people were buying. And I was completely blown away. I mean, by the end of the day, when, you know, Aiden kept a tab on all the sales, he told me what we made that day. I was like, I had to sit down. Wow. Because it was such, a, I mean, let's say it just by appearances, I was busy. I was talking a lot. But like I said, there was a lot of people looking at art, but, you know, they were really buying comics. Do you, know, you do, very you do sketches? Comics. And Will you do sketches? Surprised. Huh? Will you do uh, sketches, con sketches there? I you usually do don't because, you know, you that's the other part of cons. I'm usually talking to people. I get to see people that I've, you know, over the time I've done cons, I, I've gotten a, a friendships. Yeah. So, you know, I use cons as a way of kind of, you know, to re, you know, reconnecting with a lot of people. So I don't do, I don't do con sketches. So yeah. I kind of depend on the book sales and what I brought as far as original art. And yeah, like I said, it's conversation, you know, I, it, it, you know, it's just getting that way. So. That's interesting because I know, and again, this is not data. This is just anecdote. I know a half dozen artists uh, who go to San Diego and they pre-do con sketches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have a they have a portfolio that they've one of those old fashioned sort of black portfolios with the, exactly. with the plastic lining. Yeah. And they will do eight and a half by eleven sketches or uh, trading card or sketch cards or whatever, and they'll slip them in there and. That will be their convention sketch. So it's no, I don't have time to do a convention sketch. However, and I do my beautiful portfolio of magnificence and, <laughs> yeah. and give me 50 bucks. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like right now, I'm, I'm preparing for this week. Draw in front of people like yeah. that. So, what does yeah. that do? Yeah. So, so, so uh, a question for you then, Mike. So, since, you, since you're talking about paying for a table, do you, uh, is part of your expectation that, that you're going to, uh, and you've done it long enough to that that you you've got a the history to to show. So it's part of your expecta expectation now that I'm going to move enough product to at least uh, cover my table here. Yeah, yeah, I've got okay. to, at least a way that I'll make sure by the end of the day, whether it's a one day show, I know how much I need to push. Yeah, and I know I need certain. You know, like I said I at least want to pay the table. I, once we get to that point, everything's kind of gravy. Because it's a small expectations, you know, yeah. if, if I can find new readers and also kind of pay my, if I pay off my gas, you know, depending yeah. on how far I drive. Yeah. Those are the two factors that I, I kind of look at as far as sales and expectations and whether it's successful, you know, and, and, and you, sometimes I've not made that, you know, it's, yeah. it's realistic. Yeah. I mean, it just, well, it happens. so um, it's, when you think about it, right. So a hundred dollar table, uh, and and I'm just gonna because it because it, this keeps the math easy for me. A hundred dollar table means you got to sell you got to sell uh, twenty, 20 books. books, twenty book, twenty five dollar yeah. books just to pay for the table. That doesn't include your gas. Okay. That doesn't include any food, right? So uh, you know, at a one day show, you're not necessarily guaranteed to sell twenty books. No. You, no, that's, you know, reason, I, that's the reason I introduced the the art. I mean, yeah. I, it was more of a let's see what happens with it yeah. because I know I'm more likely to do the original art sales because it's a higher price point. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. if you've got a $5 comic, you can't, unless it's a huge comic, you can't really sell more than that because yeah. that's what everybody else around you are selling at $5 typically. Yes. You know, unless it's a graphic novel. They don't know, know you know, they're going to go, well, there's five guys in a row. you got... You know, yes, Mike's ten dollar book and this guy's three dollar book. I don't know. I'm going to get the three dollar book. Exactly. Right. right. And you got yeah. the person. So I'll come back after I go around for a while. I'll right. come back and get yours. Like, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, we've all heard that. Many yeah, we've times. all heard that one. Yeah, but, but I've, I've said that several times too. So. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom uses that line. That's right. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't give away my secrets. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'll be back. So. So if, no, when they say that, you say, well, look, you're going to have to leave a deposit. 
That's what, <laughs> no, that's what, that's what <laughs> well, you need your know, driver's uh, license with me, so that way you have to come back by. So, so that is guys, a, that is an advantage for not carrying a large stack of books, though. I've seen some comic guy, comic guys they'll go and they'll they'll plot down like a hundred copies of a book, oh, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's another thing that we can have a a, a show on of a, you know the proper way to to set up a display at your oh, thing, yeah. you know. Oh yeah. Whenever you see yeah. it, you you always seem kind of uh, um, uh, desperate when you go there and the, they've got their newest trade out and they've got like fifty copies of it sitting at the, on their table. It's like no, you yeah. just need a, a handful. You don't need fifty of them out there because you keep them under right. the table. Don't make it look like. <laughs> well, yeah. If if you if you really think you're going to sell a hundred books, don't put them all out on the table. You, no, you no, put, surely don't put, put some of them up. Yeah. I, I don't think there are very many people. And, and I hear people talking about this. It's a lot. Oh, you know, I sold out of my books. And that's why I said at the top, okay, well, how many did you take? You know, did yeah. you take a hundred? Did you take 25? Did yeah. you take 10? How no, many I did you take? I put like five of each of whatever out on yeah. the table and then leave the rest in a box. Yeah. So, so if the, uh, so Mike said that, and Mike, did you or did you not say this? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Mike said you said that you weren't, you know, quote unquote, famous enough to get your table comped. No. Uh, but but Roland, you know, is or, or more or less. So how do you think you can you can sort of fix that so you can be you can be in the, the same air that Roland is and get your table comped? What do you what do you think you need to do? Well, I, I think it's one of those things where I've also seen guys that table enough that have paid for their tables. I've seen local cons comp them table because they've been customers for so long. Yeah, so yeah. I, I've been told that also by con guys that put cons together. It's like, well, you know, you, you there a couple of years, you know, I'll you'll get known in the area. It's like the guys who run this one. There's one in this in this area. You know, I well, who knows? I might get a con invite for them or to, to have a table there. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of, of, you know, how well are you known for each con? Well, right. if well you become a draw, I, I, even though that you're not maybe a, a big name person, but you become a draw, you know, people are going to come see what you exactly. got your book last year. They're going to yes. come back next year. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I think, well, do you have like a, and do you have like a newsletter where you keep people informed about where well, you're going to be course. appearing? He does. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm subscribed. Um, <laughs> So, so I, I actually think too, some of it, and 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 we can talk about it if this is antiquated or not. But I, I honestly think some of it is, uh, do you have product in the catalog? Uh, too, yeah. Because there's still a lot of, again, right or wrong, there's still a lot of people who make those judgments about, are you in the catalog? And and, and I won't call out his name. But there's a, a there's a show in the southeast that I really like to do because I'd never done it. I reached out to the guy several years ago, and he said uh, he says, "Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm familiar with you. I, I enjoyed your work." He goes, "How long has it been since you've been in the catalog?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, probably uh, 2001 was the last time." He, and he his exact words were, "Get in the catalog, and then and then uh, and then reach out to me again." But doesn't that so. doesn't that also sound like a way to put you off? And it does. Deal with yeah, you? yeah, it, it does, and it may very well have been. I don't know, but uh, but I do think that there's enough people that kind of have that mentality of if you're not in the catalog, you're not real, and we we know that's not true. All right, we don't like those people, do we? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, a couple comments here real quick. Rob Brown, what's up, Rob? Says uh, you can make some decent dough doing shows. I use uh, underhand tactics and set the tables up to direct direct the crowd to my table. <laughs> so, it's like, like a in the aisle. So they have to walk around them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've We've tried, got some I've, folks that will stand out in front of their table. Which yes, is, which is also a good thing. You know, it, it is. depends on who you are and if you can yeah. talk and if you got something good to sell. Well, I've also and I've also seen people, people who set up who set up their 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 table more like a booth where you walk in as a yeah. standing yeah. in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you think that was, Tom haven't done a whole lot of shows? Do you think that way has any real benefit of uh, for of sales? Well, I don't know if it has a benefit of sales. It gets me to walk in. Okay. 
because if assuming that I'm interested in the stuff. Yeah, if you got something. That, and that so because because it's a way it's a way to sort of turn out of the aisle. Yeah. And and sort of go in and see the stuff. And usually the like if you see thirty people and they're all just sitting behind a table, <laughs> that that sort of looks tired visually. Yeah. But if you see the artist or the writer and they're standing and it looks kind of like a store and you walk into the space, it's more appealing to me. Even yeah. if it's an art, just a, your typical artist alley space, yeah, make it look a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. there is, there's a certain sameness to everybody's booth. Yeah. Because uh, there's so, there, there's only so much you can do in that confined space with what right. you have. Um, and also the, uh, there's the personality of the seller. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And some, I, I know that there are some people who sit behind their booth and they're, you know, they're writing or they're, they're like this or they're, they're whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, head yeah. down. All you, know, you see not, is that. They're not engaged. Yeah. And I think, well, that's great if I was visiting your studio. <laughs> right. But I'm not. I'm visiting your store. You got to, right. you got to keep that, your, your radar going all the time. You got to recognize when somebody walks by and then, yeah. Even if you're, you're doing art or whatever. Yeah. Talk to you're, them. You're yeah, selling really in that kind of environment, just hoping that somebody finds you and yes. then is interested and then pays is not, you have to be ready to engage people. And for a lot right. of introverts, that's the hard yes. part to do. Hard for a it, lot of folks. Engage, I think, is the key word in this whole thing. And I, and yeah. I think uh, I think this is where, where a lot of creators uh, fail and it is, is to fail to engage. And, and I think there's a, there's a, uh, there's a balance between, uh, uh, friendly engagement and being pushy, right? Right. Yeah. I, I I don't want to be pushed, but I don't well, mind being I don't mind being engaged. Hey, right. you know, and I think you're engaged. You got to be a little, just a one or two percent obnoxious, just just a little <laughs> enough to go. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Come check this out. But yeah, not, that's not obnoxious. You know, as soon though, as they right. say they stick their nose up, then you go okay. You have you a good man. That's, gotta, that's engagement. That's not obnoxious. Yeah, though. That's right. You well, no, be, it's a little bit. You're you're kind I, of you're stopping them as they're walking by. I want. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to hear somebody just go, "Hey, kid, come over here." Come over here. I got some candy <laughs> yeah, that, for that's you. obnoxious to me. But, but if I'm if I'm attracted to the stuff that's on your table and I'm picking it up, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. 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 And not necessarily. I don't want necessarily for you to sell me on it. Like, don't talk to me like a late night TV ad. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not buying vitamins or whatever. Just <laughs> talk to me about, cause the stuff I'm interested in, I want to talk about the, you know, tell me about the story. Tell me about the, you know. And if you act things. in the next 10 minutes. And don't also, don't also go so deep into the backstory that I'm, that, that it feels oh like school. Oh my gosh. Oh. I, cause I don't, I don't care about that. Give me, I'll know in, I'll know in 30 seconds if I want to buy it. Well, you know, uh, the uh, it, of course I know Tom knows this uh, this term well. The elevator pitch. That's Give right. Give me your elevator pitch. Yeah. Interest me that quickly. Yeah, it needs to be a good one, a good quick one. Yes. Don't be, yeah. Don't be a drunk at the bar who just you know rambles on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob says, uh, "Yep, engage." I once walked around a show to see who would engage me enough to get me to their table. Nada. Oops. What show well, is that? I, I, yeah, yeah. No, no, no names here. Well, well you know, uh, you have to kind of get in between. You have to figure out the in between space of Carnival Barker and Buddy. Yes, yes. That, that's yeah. where you have to figure out. You have to get in between there somewhere. You yeah. know, you have to engage them enough to bring them to you, but not run them off. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, are you that geeky guy, or are you are you overbearing? Or you know, so you got to find that little spot in between Carnival Barker and, and their Buddy. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and also, you have to you have to pay okay, attention well. to the specific yeah, you gotta uh, be able to read person as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if they if they come up and they're wearing an Avengers T-shirt, I can immediately say, "Man, I love that T-shirt." My favorite issue is Avengers, you know, number one hundred and forty-two with the you know Stan, uh, not Stanley, uh, 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 Englehart, and and uh, uh, you know, and see if it, I mean they may just be wearing the shirt. Yeah, but this might right. be a way to to engage. I, I know uh, Tommy's heard my, all of my pitches, uh, so because oh, we because we travel so much together. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm telling you that that in itself is one of the that that because of the way the pitch ends, 
almost always gets a smile out of them when after they've heard the yeah, pitch. They love it. I'm tired of hearing it. But they love uh, you're it. tired of hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, they, you're tired of hearing my my stupid pitches. We got we got to come I'm, up with some new ones. When I sat behind the booth and I would I would I would say to somebody, "Hey, that's a nice Avengers shirt or whatever. That's mm-hmm. or that's whatever." I wasn't I didn't immediately switch into sales mode. Right. Where like I I did genuinely like the shirt. Yeah, you right. were, you and I wanted just, and I nice. it was just it was just a way to open up the conversation yes. and then if they were interested in the conversation sort of built for a few seconds. Yes. Then, then we could you, talk about what I wanted to sell it. them. But right. I wasn't I was like, "Hey, that's a nice shirt. Let me sell you some stuff." Well, you gotta, <laughs> Let you me sell you something just like it. Stuff, right. right? So, yeah. Yeah. that's the way to do it. Because the the thing is that I think we're all interested in repeat business. Yes. Yeah. And we're all interested in building an audience. We're not interested in just making a quick sale. It's not like a monorail, 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 where we're just trying to sell the one thing and move on to the next town. It's it, it, we're hand selling and we're audience building. Yes. And you nobody wants to realize that if you're trying to sell something and they're just not into it, you need to let them go. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, we've all walked by tables, and you and you could see in your face like I'm not interested in that. And you're like, no, 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 try to get as fast it's as possible. Hate. I'm just that's not something. Hey, read, I'm... read, read the room. No means no. And right. So, right. No. Don't make eye contact. Let no. it go. <laughs> that's when you pull out your phone. If somebody starts talking to you. you go, oh, my phone. I got to talk. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a text from. I mean, uh, <laughs> They go, yeah. your phone's not on, sir. I'm like, oh, it's not. One minute. Now <laughs> it is. Kind of psychic. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get a call. I got to go get this. So, <laughs> uh, I have, I'm going to get a call. Uh, I have, I have found, you know, you talked about uh, comics earlier. I have found that there, there is a growing uh, clientele today who aren't interested in the, the floppies and are only interested in the trades. Yeah. Um, a true, true story. Um, I had, uh, a, 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 like, uh, you, you know, if I, if I go to the show, if I, if I, if I find my comics in the back issue, but in the cheap boxes, I will buy them. Right. And then what I do is I put, I, I put sets together. So I had a set of Cray one through five, the complete story. Right. Right. And, um, and I had them, I had them laid out because I still had a couple of them, but I had also just printed the trade paperback. I collected them. And and right the all the same same issues right in in the trade paperback and I'm sitting there t- talking to this guy and he's like oh man I love barbarians and you know you know so he was flipping through it he goes oh this looks great this looks great and it, and and you know so we, we had the con- conversation there he's like I don't really read comics so he goes I'm more of a graphic novel guy and I'm yes. like well. <laughs> Dude. I just so happened to have this, and he looked at it. He goes, "Oh, this is great! I'll take it." I'm like, "It's the same thing." Yeah. No, it's no, it's not. <laughs> one's a cat, one's a cat not comic, the, one's like a book. That guy, it's not. <laughs> so I, I do believe not there is, him. yeah, and, and of course, you know, that's part of our model. We're we're many to trade, uh, right. uh, and, and but I, I I just think you know there are some people who who won't buy the floppies because. For whatever reason, I, I don't know the reason, but they, they won't buy them, but they will buy those trades. I know the reason. What's, what's the reason? What's the reason? I think the reason is because they're casual readers. They don't have a place to put a comic book, but they do have a place to put a graphic novel. Oh, the book show. I was going to say, I thought you I thought you were going to say it's because they didn't think the whole the whole thing would come out. Kind of, oh right, <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Also, they might not like the uh, the fact that the, you get issues one and two, but it's a four part because you got four part story, and then right, these right. never going to come out right. with three and four. Yeah. Well, and, and, I, and I don't know where to find it. And that's the other thing too. That's it. How do you get them? Me, so yeah. I'm not going to find the other issues. It's like I've never, I've never seen you in my life, and I'm just now seeing you, and I'm interested in this thing. If I never see you again in my life, how am I going to get the rest of the how story? Am I, get this? <laughs> right. yeah. I don't want to go on a quest. Right. Uh, Rob says it's uh, it's more than just getting a table and product. You got to sell it. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Get ready for this question. I'm not sure we have time to do it again. Agent, oh, no, you're asking. Back. <laughs> oh, no. so, so Agent Cub says, so you think Marvel will ever sell Malibu? And then he says, sorry, I just got here. <laughs> should, I speak, should I speak faster? <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Give him, give him the. Uh, uh, yeah, Tom's uh, gonna the, buy the Cliff, it. Cliff, Cliff Notes version. So, so here's the thing: Marvel doesn't own Malibu. Disney does. Right. Because that's, Disney owns yeah, Marvel. That's true now. That's and true. Disney, Disney is not in the business of acquiring things and then selling them off. And Disney would never let a never let their characters be sold to another company because if they get sold to another company and become even more successful, then Disney looks bad yeah. for having sold it. That's a dang that Tom. He is so smart. <sighs> and so and but also the uh, there is nobody who would buy it. Uh-uh. Not the this price. Long. The price that Disney would ask for to sell Malibu would be so beyond comprehension. That there is, how many companies could buy it? Five yeah. in the world. You mean based off happens. today's monies, or or what it would be if they could buy it for what you sold it for? Back well, if they, could <laughs> buy it for, if they could buy it for the fifteen million, so in today's money, what is that? Twenty five million. Who's got twenty five million? Who could make a go of it? Yeah, that would make Nobody. it. Yeah. Well, and and the other thing is, uh, you you have to look at if you had twenty five million. Is is your twenty five, and that's just to get the rights, right? That's yeah, just right. to own yes. it. That's yeah. not to produce anything. Any so can you yeah. can you take that twenty five million and then whatever X number of dollars it takes <laughs> make to it make for animation, a movie? Okay, yeah. Can, can you can you turn that yeah. around? And I I don't know that that can be done right now. No, I because all I need is five million dollars, and I can start the same company over again. Right. <laughs> and so I don't yeah. need I don't need to buy uh, a company. With mm -hmm. what are essentially now older characters that nobody remembers right. in, in the bigger picture of things, yeah. Um, I'd much rather create new, new yeah. stuff, uh, and I could do that less expensively, and yeah. I could even I could do it with even some of the same people. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, some yeah. Of them. And, and, and unfortunately, as you said, the their old characters, most of which can be found in the the dollar boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and that's the other thing too, is there isn't, there isn't really a market. The industry does not support yet another superhero universe. It just doesn't. No, it's, things not, are di way different now. That's yeah. Sure. It's it, cause um, it just, it didn't going to happen. Va if well, Valiant was a, was a, was a valiant effort at third position uh -huh. and they, they failed twice yeah. and uh, dark horses failed doing that. And Malibu didn't do it. Uh, Others haven't either. There's no there's no spot in the plate in the market for it. The market's too small. Yeah. It's it's a fun um sword I'm looking for. It's a exercise. It's a, it's yeah, a it's a fun exercise. Mm -hmm. It's a fun mental exercise to think about. But uh yeah, it ain't gonna ever happen. Also, also if somebody gave me the the four or five million dollars. There's so many new creators out now and so many oh, new yeah. ideas and so much new thinking going on and so much of the way the world works that's different from the way it did 30 years ago. Yeah. I'd much rather create a whole bunch of new stuff with, new with, stuff. yeah, with new people and just, you know, cause there's, there's, there's stuff that people have, have their creators that didn't exist back then. Yep. There's ideas that didn't exist back then. There are uh, a bunch of technologies that didn't exist back then. I would love to take advantage of all of that. Yeah. And by take advantage, I don't mean screw over. I mean, <laughs> utilize, <laughs> utilize. Um, yeah. Utilize, and so I think that's it. Would be it would be exciting to start something new from the ground up. Yeah, and whether that's a superhero universe or something different, I don't know. But if somebody wants yeah. to give me four or five million dollars, I'm your man. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> folks. So, uh, so, so get those checks out. And if you act in the next ten minutes, you can also get a copy <laughs> of. <laughs> that's right. Step into my booth. I've got some things to sell you. And here are my healing crystals. And here's my Etsy candle. Do you like comics? You came to a comic show. <laughs> <laughs> hyper hyper says like and subscribe kids thank you hyper thank you for reminding us always to do that yes where, wherever you are listening to us please remember to like and subscribe and share to all of your friends who you think might uh, enjoy tuning in to hear what we have to say so before uh, we go does roberta yes. want to say what she's working on oh it's a secret <laughs> no <laughs> i'm kidding so you can't this talk is about it this is um, the Silver Line Team Up Champion. Number, number two. Number two. Which, number two. if all goes well, uh, we're still working age. on it. I don't know what's going on with that. We should uh, hopefully be Fall crowdfunding this one in a couple of weeks. We should start it. So mm -hmm. fingers, fingers, fingers crossed. 
We're still we're still building it. Wait till uh, you wait wait till you see that cover I did. Ooh, what tease? Oh, wait a minute. What, what happened there? Oh, oh she left. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, there she is. I didn't leave. I'm here. No, I happened? was playing. I was playing around with some of the buttons below to see what. And you what, uh, me in existence. No, you were still <laughs> there, but some reason you're because you, you can still hear us, right? I can't. Oh. We're what? I, see, now. I can't see my thumbnail, so no, I, we're I, all I, don't know what works. <laughs> I, I know when I'm not wanted. <laughs> no, what happened? My there it is. Okay. okay. Um nice. All right, so uh, Agent, uh, Agent Co. All right, here we go. Uh, Hyper says, pre-order Silverline Comics from your local comic shop. Uh, well, yes. What's in the catalog um, right now? I'm fixing to go look. Uh, y'all, y'all don't know how hard it is to keep up with all this. Well, what's what's here? What's there? <laughs> if only there was Trump, software where Trump you could do this. Or is it Kayla's three that's in the catalog? Um, this is 21. I don't think the new catalog is out yet. So it's still it's still Trump's three. Oh, Trump's yeah. three is there now. It is in the current catalog only for like another week, I think. I think the new catalog oh, comes wait. out. New catalog yeah. comes out Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I've not. I've not. And then and I've that will be that will be uh, uh, Kalis uh, three. Uh, and then Hyper said uh, Roland snapped his fingers Thanos style, and everyone disappeared. <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> uh agent cub said i've been reading the protectors and they've been really fun to read uh i'm glad to hear that as uh as the one who edited the the later 75 percent of those issues i'm glad to hear that i thought it was a, a a lot of fun as well i thought it was a fun fun story with a lot of fun characters so uh a agent once you get work once you work your way through protectors you'll have to go back and find uh x mutants and dinosaurs for hire as well, as as well as well as the uh, the protectors spinoffs, uh, ferret, man of war, gravestone, and gravestone. airman. That was my book. Mm -hmm. Airman was our best selling newsstand title, by the way. You lie. No, it had a sell through of like thirty percent. You lie. I knew really. Not. I remember. I remember that fondly. Really? Yeah. I would so not have guessed that, Tom. Yeah, Airman. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it, we just we got in different outlets or we got on. Uh, there was something about the title or the placement or whatever. But it was a, uh, it was our best sell through <laughs> title on the newsstand. Wow, we are uh, we're probably about to get kicked off of the uh, the madness channels. Before uh, we go, can I say something about conventions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not we're not quite we're not quite done here. So if you're listening to us on the Man Madness channel and pops uh, pops, if you kick us off, you kick us off. It's fine. We still love you. Uh, it, but if you want to hear the rest of us, jump over to the Silverline channel uh, to hear. Uh, I want Tom uh, to talk about his uh, book that he's working on. Well, I, no, well, I would that, but but I also I also we, we haven't got to the the to quiz about some of the Malibu sales yet. Uh, for, oh, yeah. And I, realizing this was in the in the nineties, but I want to hear some of that as well. So so at conventions, I look for things like this. Oh wait 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 wait. Uh, where are you here? Oh, oh wow! Look at that. Cool. Kirby greatness. It's inked by D. Bruce Barry, who is not necessarily Kirby's best inker. But wow! Look so at that that's chart. A, that's a good beautiful book. condition cool. book. One dollar. No yeah. way. Yeah. No way. WonderCon dollar bins. I go there. I, oh, I go there on the last the day, bin. and I go to the dollar bin, and I just, I just, you know, because you never know what you're going to find. No. Nope. Yeah. And you know, I don't have the previous issue. I don't have the next issue, but. I want that one. Yeah, for a buck. Usually, usually any commandies I find that find in the uh, dollar bins are are much <laughs> are more out. beat up than that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I got to mm -hmm. I go through a lot. It's you know, it's a lot of you know, you're you're weeding through somebody's you know, it's oh, a yeah. lot of day old bread in there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, Tom, I think you made a uh, uh, made some kind of comment on a picture that had me and Barry looking through books. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think your comment was something like, got it, got it, don't got it, got it, yeah. got it. Because <laughs> the thing is, I'm not like you techno guys. I don't have all that stuff on in, uh, in, in an a, app. In an app. I've, i got to try to remember it from my head. <laughs> I ain't uh, got a good memory. 
Agent Cub said, uh, "I just I, I just got all the spinoffs, and I plan on reading those next. Good. I think you'll enjoy uh, enjoy all of them as well." And then he says, "Tom, you got ripped off. You could have gotten it for twenty cents when it came out on the newsstand." Here's the thing: I probably did pay twenty cents for that at one point. Uh, it's a, do you want to talk about the Malibu convention stuff? Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I want to. What kind of? Because I remember. Uh, before I went to Malibu, what I remember, no, uh, yeah, before I went to, before I became an employee, um, right. one of my first San Diego's out there, Malibu had an entire island yes. split, split exactly in half. One yeah. half was for uh, promotions, which is where I got to sit by uh, Joe Kubert and sign autographs, right. which I've, I've told the story before. But then on the other side was, uh, was all the back issues of comics. A retail store. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, and um, now there was a lot of comics back there because yeah. Malibu had a, a huge backstock. Yeah. So what, what kind of, I guess I have sort of a twofold question. What kind of um, bulk sales are we talking about? Something like that. But then look at more individually. What, what would you expect the average one issue of a thing to sell? So here's the thing. Uh, we didn't care. Okay. Um, because that was at that point because it's already volume. paid for print run. Yeah. Yeah. So what what we cared about was the quantity, so the volume of mm -hmm. the of mm -hmm. the whole thing. So and again, we're talking about 90, 92, 91, yes. 92. So that's yeah. a whole different world. And and Malibu wasn't like you guys who are basically owner operators. Right. Malibu was was sort of a machine. Yes. Uh, and had and had a fairly large staff at that time, easily probably 30 or 35 employees in 91. And so um, the idea was that we still wanted to make a big enough presence at the San Diego Comic-Con, but we also didn't want, want to be out a ton of money. Yeah. So how can you turn, how can you turn that expense into a, uh, either a break even or a net gain? And so then that we, we came up with the idea of splitting the booth in half and having the fun stuff with the creators and the signings and right. the meeting meets in the front. And then yeah. the back would be the sort of low rent discount <laughs> yeah. retail store, store. Yeah. <laughs> where everything was still uh, in uh, long boxes. Right. And um, so we had, it was basically what we had in the warehouse that we had a lot of. And, uh -huh. and we tried to put it in alphabetical order. And we yeah. try to make signs for you that. Tried to tried target to, we, who was going to be signing on the other side because I, I remember doing one show where I didn't bring any books and I was at your your thing and I was like, well, this is weird. But they're for my book. This is kind of strange. <laughs> where where are these people getting these books from? Right. So we had. <laughs> I must be real popular. People are bringing books from the house, and you find out that you guys are selling them for a dollar a piece behind me. <laughs> well, we sold them. We sold them for cover price. Yeah. Um, well, actually, because they were. Some of them were dollar ninety five, and some were two ninety five. We just round up to the nearest dollar because nobody wanted to make a nickel change. Right. right. Um, and the idea was that the the retail sales would have to pay for the booth and the hotels. Wow. And so, um, for the three years that we did, it, and also the the thinking was that we've been to San Diego before. There weren't retailers selling our books. Right. Yep, and we yep. couldn't convince them to sell our books because they have limited space and they're going right. to put they're going to put Dark Knight and Watchmen and all the other stuff right for sale. Yeah. They're not going to put our stuff out there and we're not going to be able right. to convince them. So we're going to sell. And if anybody gets mad at us, we're just going to deal with it as it comes. <laughs> and so um we would do the um, Malibu way. Yeah, well, it's it's cuz Scott ingrained in us that we can do anything we want as long as it return as long as it breaks even so if you have yeah. a crazy promotional idea part two of that is how can we not lose money on that right <laughs> so we all want to go to san diego how can we not lose money on that and so then we sold and we would make we would make enough there to pay for the booth and to cover all the hotels for every employee who was going to attend really and so that would in 1991 dollars that's about eleven thousand dollars yeah, that's a that's lot of that's that's still a lot of two and three dollar books. It's a ton of two and three dollar books. Yeah, and <laughs> and we would and it's just it's stuff that we had lying around. Yeah, 
and we would just Best we had already been paid. Yeah, we had a mail order guy, and mm -hmm. you know a couple weeks before the show, he would just bag and board the stuff, and you know pop it in the in the long boxes, and then uh, Dave or Chris or myself or whomever would drive it down, and uh, then we'd set it up. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know, I know that that's uh, as as an independent comic maker, that is one of the problems that you, you know, I, I don't know if you, anybody's ever heard me tell the story, but um, you know, I used to order comics from from Malibu. I used to not a lot, but you you you'd say, hey, yeah, if you want more comics than your comps, here's what uh, here's yeah. what, and I, I think I remember what it was, but uh, I can't I can't recall exactly, but it was a good deal. It was a it was a deeply discounted deal. But what happened to me is is uh, well. Well, the first couple of issues of Cat and Mouse, I got invited to go down to New Orleans uh, show, and I went down there, and I I didn't I didn't have anything. I I, I went down there thinking, oh, here I go, I'm going to be a guest at a show, and I sat at my table and I sat and I watched everybody for the whole weekend. I no one had my books, right? Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't have any to sell because. I didn't think that's what I had to do. I thought I was, you know, I'm the I'm the writer coming down to sign autographs, right? And and nobody had my book, so I said, okay, well, I don't want that to happen again. And so I'm like, I, I need to get some, I need to get some, I need to get me some copies of books that I can then take to shows and sell. Yeah, and that's how that's how I got started because nobody had my book. Ari Jones was the same way. He would do a lot of Midwest shows, and he would call us up like a couple of weeks before the show and say, listen, I'm going to be doing a show. Can, you know, I got to get some stuff. Yeah. And cause we, the thing is that with the, uh, with like with the stuff we sold in San Diego, there's a, if you, if you check your old contract rolling, you'll see that we pay you for 200 copies. Yes. That we're going to sell and not keep track of. Right. Um, <laughs> I recall that. So we pre, we prepaid you for the stuff that we're going to sell retail uh, <laughs> because there's no way we were going to sell 200 copies of cat and mouse at uh, San Diego. It just right. the, the we can't prove that, but it just didn't make any sense that we would ever right. have any. We wouldn't have anything that would sell two hundred. Kind of crazy yeah. to try to do it. Yeah, if, if there was, then somebody would alert us and like saying, "I I can't believe it. All the other stuff sold like five or ten copies, but this one thing sold two hundred copies." Yeah. Then we'd have to try to figure out what the heck was going on. Yeah. Well, you did that. You did have that with the one book, right? Uh, uh, uh uncensored mouse. Oh, the uncensored mouse. Well, that was. Yeah. <laughs> No. That was crazy because everybody wanted that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was here's the thing. I went to uh after I left Malibu and I was uh I was I was pitching to Disney. Uh I, I got invited to pitch to a TV show to Disney and the Disney executive um he asked Chris and I where we were from. Oh. And I said, Well, we, we you know we worked at Malibu Comics and he goes, Damn, I wish I'd gotten me a copy of that uncensored mouse you guys did. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and I said, dude, I got one. And so, <laughs> no way. So the meeting was over. I, uh, I, I went back to the office and I slid him a copy. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> he still uh, didn't hire me. Still didn't take my show. But, oh, yeah, you know, you, you should have said, uh, you should have said, I, I'll slip you one if I get the contract. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Be I'm, back not, I'm not a hardcore guy. Like that. You can have yeah, one. No, no, no. I'll give you one on the second interview. How about that? <laughs> I've right. right. Next yeah. time. When I come back and you say yes, then uh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hyper says, uh, Tom, I have the same inventory system. Starting to think I need a hardware update. Though. <laughs> yeah. Well, <it's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, apparently, the Overstreet guys have an app. Um. That that's easy to uh, to stick on your phone where you can sort of track the stuff that you need or want. Yeah, I forget which one. I use. As a comic shop, you mean? No, as a as, as a, a fan. as a fan. That way, I don't have to keep buying the same issue of Commandy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, there's a something called CBZ or something like yeah, that. People, that's the one I use. Yeah. yeah, people keep telling me I need to get that. I I don't. I, I have the easy. same thing. It'll even and, scan and, barcodes, and you don't even see, have to like punch in the book. It, it's it's really good. Here's, Here's my here's my problem because I do use the same inventory as as Tom and, and apparently Hyper. Uh, I've ended up with um, about three or four copies of yeah. many many of the first twenty issues of uh, Elementals. Well, yeah, I, I get 
I got like six. I got like six copies of American Flag Eight. <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> because the thing is, because you love I it. Know, I don't know if your brain works like this, but mine does. It's like I don't know, and I don't. I, if, yes. And if it's a dollar, I can't pass it up because if I get home and I realize I passed it up, I'm gonna be mad at myself. Yes. So I'd rather yes. I'd rather happily have you know six copies of the same issue than than miss it. Well, and I've also found that uh, one of the things that I, I have started doing on, in recent years is that um, I will, I, I'm like you, if it's a dollar. I, I can't pass it up for a dollar, right? right. If I find, Oh, I, I've already got this. I wonder who might like my extra copy. I bet yeah. Tommy would like my extra mm -hmm. copy and then I'll give it to Tommy or I'll send it to Mike or I'll send right. it to you. I'll send Roberta. I've sent, uh, well, I sent Roberta a no novel not too long ago. What did I send you? Roberta? Yeah, you did. Yeah. That was a, uh, Oh, Highland, Highland, it was a Highland book, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Niven. No, yeah, Larry Niven. Yeah, Larry Niven. Boop. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I I would love a super. I would love a superhero that had the power to park a car. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my Larry Niven story. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mike, anything else that you can think of that we we didn't cover? No, I think we were covering a lot of stuff. So, you know, a lot of stuff that we're interested in. I mean, you know, like Tommy, you know, Tommy does sketches at cons. You know, yep. how, does, how does that kind of work out for him? Um, you know, I go to the shows and you can ask, you can ask Roland because we do a bunch of, I mean, there's some show. I mean, I've gone to plenty of shows that, that I didn't make nothing. Yeah. You know, for me, it depends on, you know, what my goal is like right now i'm trying to save money for a new bike right <laughs> so i am i am whatever money i'm making i'm i'm banking i'm putting in a, in a in a sock basically i'm trying to but sometimes you know i'm just going if if i generally if i'm having a good time that's all yeah. i care for yeah that's yeah. all i care about i just want to yeah. have a good time so it uh if i sell a bunch of stuff then fabulous if i don't i'm not too upset i kind of figure this show is going to cost me 300 bucks to go if i don't make anything well i put that 300 bucks i'm paying to have a good time for 300 bucks and you know yeah. it's yeah well, but, but right now it's kind of a little different i'm taking i'm trying to make money for yeah. something but yeah and i think if i was if i was going to give uh, like we were talking this this uh, this conversation if i was going to uh give a uh a, an up-and-coming artist a recommendation or a suggestion or, or or tips or whatever I, I would I would say to remember that that not all not every show is going to be great and not every show is going to be bad. Yeah. You you might do you know uh, one show a month for three months in a row and that first one might be great and you might be oh I sold everything that I brought right and then the next show you're like I didn't sell enough to buy a Snickers bar yeah. you know and it also but, you know it's it's the position that you're in you know if. If you if you have to, I mean, if you're spending rent money on the show and you have to make that rent money back, then maybe you shouldn't go to the show. Yeah, exactly. you know. Yeah. So I think or, that's, or your mortgage money or your power bill or whatever. That kind I think of. that's it. If you're looking, if you're looking to go to the show to be the financial success and start and use it to pay your other bills. I think that's yeah. you. You're not in that position. I mean, you're regardless, dangerous. yeah. Regardless, yeah. if I make any money, I'm making. You know, I'm entertaining people. I'm, I probably give away just as much as I as I as I sell. You know, most a lot of times, and I'm getting repeat customers. And you know, every time I go back to a place that I've been before, they're coming back to see me because they remember yeah. Thomas is a fun yeah. guy. Yeah. And so yeah. it's always that 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 after sell. I'm always just kind of working for for later i may not make the money right then but i'm gonna make it right at one point you've you got know. that new tommy smell i'm telling you <laughs> yeah yeah so when so I, the uh hell i had some i had some i was gonna interrupt you on I got my sure right. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you see what's a good because every show is different and a yeah. regional show in one place is not like the regional show in another place what's a good show what's a good consistent show if somebody was listening and they wanted to go to a show and set up to sell their comic, where would, where would you recommend? 
Because I would not recommend San Diego. I would not recommend the New York yeah, show. No, they're, they're too folks. expensive to go yeah. to if you're, yeah. if you're a beginner, folks. Guy. I mean, luckily, you know, and, and it's this thing here in Florida. There's like a show every other weekend. So right. I'm, yeah. And um, <laughs> I mean, one day shows just all over the place. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of crazy down here. It wasn't like that in Mississippi. You were a little no. more, you know, picky. But down here, there's just shows all the time. And then sometimes Roland and I are like, golly, I can't go to the show that's in the next county over. It's just going to be the same people I just saw. That's right. Not really good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. I already sold the stuff and maybe and it's not fair to the uh, to the people putting on the show. It's like we got a show that we do. That's we call it the mall, the mall con. Yeah. You know, and we kind of. I kind of he does it two three times a year and it's like well I just go once a once a once a year you know, go in June yeah because yeah. you know I I I think it's kind of it's it's not worth it to him to give me a free table spot that could be given to somebody that hasn't been there before that'd be better to to get somebody new in there he'd make some more money you know so right yeah um, uh, you know usually if I sell a page or two. You know, that's a couple hundred bucks and sell some books. I usually sell my little nay and so so trade that's 20, 30 bucks with a sketch in it. That's a couple hundred bucks. So I usually do fairly good or I do nothing. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's the way it works for me. <laughs> but I'm still having a good time. I'm, I'm well, just having fun. So I, I, I go ahead. Go ahead. But so Tommy, who who buys the the little girl trade? Um, well, that, that's the thing. When my wife is at the table, she can, she sells the book. It's like what Roland was talking about with the tiny book. When, uh, when, when I go to shows, I love, I love it when Renee comes, she sits at the table, you know, she, she just, uh, everybody sees a, a, a female at the table and they just, they just flock. Over yeah. to, but when they see, right. when they see me sitting there and then I've got all this kind of cool little cartoony stuff, they're like, what's wrong with that guy? Why is that? <laughs> so it's kind of sometimes it's kind of hard to 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 do my more kid hero you should you should hire it you should hire some uh some local person to sit next to you and and pretend to be you know yeah we tried to do that one time actually we we did we 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 tried to do that at at daytona and and, because she's a the girl's a cosplayer and she backed that on us like the week before the show we were all excited about it but to, to, to answer your question, I my Kid Hero books, because there's I've got three main books going on. I've got the little the little uh, Mystery Girls book, which is more right. of a Scooby-Doo kind of thing. And then I've got Zomboy, which is just superhero. It's just kids. Right. You know, kitty, you know, kid type. And then I've got the Little Nay and So-So stuff, which is more female oriented. So I've so I've I've got something for everybody. So, right. you know, it, it's a, yeah. So I sell to, to grown men. I sell to little kids. I sell, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got a big about, how about you, Mike. Who's, who are, who are you selling to? Uh, you know, typically um, the guys that are my age, guys that miss the, the type of comics that uh, we read in the 80s and the 90s that I kind of pattern man the mask towards. You know, it, that's typically sure. I, you know, it's an all ages book, and I would love, but I, I, I unfortunately, the most of the people come to my table are are pretty much my, you know, my peers. It, and so it, I, I love it because we have a lot of shared experiences. Um, yeah, we certainly get off on enough tangents while they're buying the books. Uh, but you know, I, one of these days, I would like to try to find a younger audience because, again, you know, that was the stuff I grew up on. And that was kind of my thinking of doing this book was that somebody could give it to their son or their daughter or just the younger audience that would enjoy just a just a fun, you know, good guy, positive type story. So that's but so yeah, I was, this is my age. If I was setting up a convention, then I would put Roland between the two of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. <laughs> because Roland, Roland's the writer, and you, you and you basically make a writer sandwich. So you put and then I would together. have Roberta sit with me because then all mm-hmm. the all the people would come over and buy stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Watch, watch yeah. me work. Which well, Roberta also, yeah, that would be yes. the thing too. Because watching Roberta color, I mean, that's that's an Hopefully audience. Something. Yes. Yeah. And Tommy, uh, you know what Tommy will do sometimes? He's actually got a monitor. That uh, that he'll take and set up on the uh, on his table while he draws on his pad, 
which I think is I think is brilliant because people that's, will stop right. and look at that. Yep, watch. Me that's, so that's another thing too that I, I don't know how this would work, but I would certainly want to try it. Would be if I was sketching on the iPad and I had the monitor there, for people would see. I would invite people to come over and help me draw. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> interesting. Like I wouldn't finish it wouldn't, them for me so I could go shop. It, well, no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be one of my. It wouldn't be a project that. That I was it wouldn't be one on of the screen. commissions. Well, no, I would set up a page. Yeah. And I would just invite some kid over and I would just, just say, here you are. I want you to yeah. help me pick a color or help me, you know, yeah, hold the pen, help mm -hmm. me, you know, just to help, just as a visual to help draw a crowd and pull them in. Because I could always do that control Z and delete that. Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's digital, right? So it's yeah, like, it's digital. So it doesn't, yeah. Yeah. but it would give yeah. the kid sort of a thrill, I think, to, uh, to participate. Yeah, yeah, like I, all, like all my kid hero books, I have um, I, I I pull pages out of them to the black and white pages, and as kids go by, I go like, "You like you like the color," and then they go, cool. "Yeah," and then I pull. You can ask Roland. I will pull out a big stack and throw it on top of the table. I don't hand it across to them in the aisle. I put it on my table so they have yeah. to walk up to the table. Right, and then I just say, pull three or four pages out of this. Take what you yeah. want. And then the then the parents would be like, "Oh, this is kind of neat. What's the book this came out of?" And I'm, "Oh, it came out of this book." And then, boom, there's a five dollars up. Oops, I'm covering all. It my would be. I, I know it's it's another piece of equipment, but if they had a uh, an iPad where they could pick a coloring page out and then print it from the printer at the table, zzz, 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 the yeah. color it right there. So anyway, it's food for thought. When my yeah. when my booth gets bigger, then I will. Uh, that's right. Had the printouts. So if I had to, uh, to I would slightly revise my uh, uh, my uh, uh, answer from talking about um, Pops just sent me this, asked me to share this. I'll share this in just a minute. Uh, if I had to re revise it a little bit, um, what I would say is that um, because you got, we're talking about, you know, don't spend your rent. Don't spend, if you're a creator starting off and you're trying to figure out about to do a show or not to do a show, whether you're buying a table or just paying for the gas and the hotel room or whatever, don't spend more than you're not willing to lose. It's kind of so, what people should do when they're going be, gambling. They yeah, don't spend be, that, but that's what be you prepared should. whatever you decide you're going to spend on that show for the travel, for the food, for the hotel or, or table, whatever whether that includes some of that or, or very little of that, whatever that amount is, you need to be prepared to not make any of that back. And then right when you, if, if that's money that you need. Yes. In the next week. That kind right. Of thing. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, got a couple of other comments here. Uh, agent said, I buy young blood number one whenever I see it in the dollar. But man, I think I have 35. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, Rob Brown says, uh, most of the shows I've done is up and down the East coast. Uh, most of the small ones. Yeah. Check this out. Crunchy wonton says, Hey, all this is Charlene, an old friend of Hank Canals was curious what your thoughts and strategies of digital comics web as uh, a channel for readers to discover the silver line books. So is this a Charlene I'm thinking of? I, yeah. I think she would have used a different no, reference. We okay. Know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, she's um, the same guy, whoever it is. Okay. Yeah. So, so actually there was a question there and then we got to call it a night y'all. Um, uh, she, she said probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> See, was curious what your thoughts and strategy of digital comics web as channel for readers to discover the Silverline books. Um, so I, I'll, I'll take the baton first with this. So no one's really, to my knowledge, there's, there's not been anybody to really figure out how to make money digitally. Uh, I know there's, there, there's several places out there um, you know, there's the uh, now defunct Amazon owns them now. Um, Comicsology. Thank you, Comicsology. There's, there's been there's been things like that. Uh, clearly, they didn't make enough money, or, or they would still be around uh, instead of being absorbed in, into um, uh, into Amazon. 
uh, what we've what we've been using uh, we've been using uh, Global Comics Express. Um, Global Comics Express. Let's see if I can find it. Um, it's a uh, it's a free app. Um, Global Comics. I'm just trying to get to the page. That's not my login. <laughs> uh, I don't need to install it anyway. Global Comics Express. Um, I am not sleepy, and I am not trying to ditch you. I'm being, <laughs> I'm just a little concerned about being kicked off the channel. Um, um, so, so Global Comics Express uh, is a new subscription-based. Uh, I say new; it's been around about two years. It's a subscription-based thing, kind of like Netflix. Um, and what our plan has been so far, and we it may. It may go through a little revision this year, uh, but what has been so far is that we've been releasing uh, a week after on Global Comics Express, a week after comics ship to stores. So uh, you can actually find um, you can actually find what did I do with them? Oh, all, all three of these books you can find on Global Comics Express, right um, now, I, and it tells me the number of readers we had. It we've had about two hundred readers of uh, Trump's number one on Global Comics Express. The last time I looked, which was about a week and a half ago, something like that. Um, so it's available there. Uh, the, part of the problem is, you know, how do you send up? We always make them available digitally for uh, for our crowd funders, uh, mostly because we have some, some of our backers are overseas and um, they are, they don't really want to pay the the exorbitant shipping cost for overseas, so they just say, "Hey, yeah, I want to support you. Give me the digital thing." Um, so we do that. They're available. That's it, pretty much. Um, we'll probably make them available on Indie Planet as we move forward as well. Um, they haven't been available on Indie Planet other than physical copies, but probably moving forward. Uh, we will do that as well. Now, as a strategy for, uh, oh, you wouldn't promotion, just, just um, so yeah, that's where they're available. All right, I'll turn the baton over to somebody else now. What do you guys think? Well, we we talked about this several weeks ago. Yeah, is that there's two kinds of digital comics, really? At least the way I see it. One is that you just take the physical comic and put it online. So it still right. looks like the comic. Yeah. You're just reading it on. And so it's harder to read on your phone. It's nice to read on a big iPad. Um, but there's there's the other comics, like what Webtoon does, where they, they make comics for the format so it fits yeah. on your phone, yeah. and you just scroll up. And that's a different kind of audience than is currently reading the other books. Yeah. And so I think I don't think there is yet a lot of uh, crossover between the two. Mm -mm. Like I don't think the uh, webtoon readers are going to go pick up indie, indie comics, and I don't think indie comics people are going to rush to webtoon, at least currently. No, not anytime soon. And so, um, for now, I don't think because I I talked to the same DC people that Roland and I know, and uh -huh. digital comics for them are just basically uh, a supplement. It's like fifteen percent of the total audience for the actual comic book. And so it's not, it's not a thing where the digital people suddenly go, oh, I got to go buy this. Yeah, or the, and it's the still comic book people suddenly where, say, I'm not going to buy the comic. I'm going to go read it online. Yeah, yeah. it's still that thing. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's people still don't want to pay for stuff online. Right. Yeah. Even if maybe they'll pay for movies and things like that, like Netflix or whatever that they can watch on their TV. But, uh, you know, it, it, people just think that everything online should be should free. be free. Yeah. yeah. So and so that, what you're looking at here is, is Global Comics. Um, and you see on the front page, the thing about it is on the front page, it's stuff that you already know, right? There's Invincible. There's uh, more Invincible. There's uh, there's Scott Pilgrim. These these things aren't new, right? Right. Right. Um, uh, we, I did. Oh yeah, I did just look us up. But if you if you wanted to go to Silverline Comics, you can see um, we have. Uh, 
There we go. So you, you can get Kalos one, Trump's one, and Trump's two. And that's uh, oh look at that. see so Trump frame, Trump's th Trump's one has two hundred and fifty three views. Yeah. Kalos one has sixty seven views. Trump's two uh, has none as of yet. Um, so I, that hopefully that's not some because I've screwed up the settings somehow. <laughs> which which it, you know is very possible. I may have screwed up the settings somehow. You have some go subscription like, thing based you need to get some teenage the... TikTok kid to figure that out for you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that a subscription deal where, like, say we're going to make up a number, say it's ten dollars a month, and whatever they view, it gets divided by how many pages, and each page gets yes a cut of, yeah. of yes the subscription. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah, Spotify. Yeah, I, do I, it. I, I got an email. I got an email well, that said. Uh, a few weeks ago, that said Trump's one had earned something like thirty-two cents or something like that. All right, that's going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had one of my, uh, I had one of my TV shows overseas send me a thirty-two cent royalty check. So it's uh, <laughs> so <laughs> um, money in my pocket. Yeah, with so, it went through PayPal, they took it all, took thirty-five cents of it just to give you the. That's right. Go, go to PayPal, <laughs> three cents. <laughs> um. Microbank, uh, crap. What was I going to say? Um, so what, Roberta, what do you do? Roberta didn't say real quick about what huh? she does at shows. I don't go to shows often. Okay, so there we go. It's, it's been right. a long time. We're trying to get Basically her. We're trying to get her to go. Yeah, it costs too much. It does, and that's the problem. Um, and I live uh, in LA, and Comic Con is insane. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so uh, Pops asked me to, to share this out real quick, y'all, um, before we go back to Roberta here. Uh, Zen, the Zen Bounty Wars uh, from Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. Um, our buddy, uh, Tommy, you might remember our buddy, uh, Paul Pelletier, did, oh. some of the very, some, did some of the very early issues of Zen the Intergalactic uh, Ninja. Oh, he he didn't do this one. He didn't do this one. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, but they've got 21 minutes to go. Uh, look at that. They got uh, close to uh, 200 backers. So uh, if you are interested in getting that, that's, this looks like Bill Mouse here. Uh, that that one in the middle for sure. Yeah, that is Bill Mouse right there. It's got to be Bill Mouse. Oh, here yeah. we're yeah by 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 Nera X uh, Starn and Mouse. So uh, is that from first comics. What is that logo there? Um. The yeah. First comics. Movie. Yeah. First okay. comics. I'll see them at San Diego in the uh, coming months. So, um, so yeah, get over there, back it if you can. Um, but yeah, Paul Pelletier's, uh, and you can if you uh, if you're uh, clever and looking in, and when you're looking in the back issues uh, in the dollar boxes, you can still find uh, Paul's work in in that one because it's it's one of these books that nobody knows he did, right? They kind of like uh, Del Keo and. and uh, uh, Dragon Force. Thank you, Dragon Force. Right? It's like nobody knows he did. Um, uh, let's see here. Hold on. Um, Crunchy Wanton says Hank Canals and Wills Protasio are two of my co-founders at our new startup. Maybe we can connect at uh, San Diego Comic Con, and we can show you what we are building. It's mm -hmm. cool and addresses exactly what you were mentioned. So, Crunchy Wanton, uh, I, I will be there. This is the man that I'm you need not. to look for. <laughs> Uh, get, get a good shot of him. This is, this is Mr. Tom Mason. This is what he looks like. For him. Uh, Hank can absolutely uh, introduce you because uh, Hank yeah. and, and Hank knows Tom real well. So I know, I know Hank. I just, I just saw Hank. Uh, man, when did I see? Him? I saw him at last San Diego for uh, uh, Ultraverse panel, and uh, uh, that's right. A couple other things. <laughs> that was uh, WonderCon, wasn't it? Yeah. The San Diego uh, panel. Was he was he at WonderCon? I don't think he was uh, at WonderCon. I'm saying that's that's when the oh that that's not when the San Diego uh, that's not when the Ultra panel was. No, I, I think that's it was when the Ultra panel was. Yeah, it was oh, last okay. San Diego. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, anyway, yes. Uh, look for look for Tom uh, and and Tom uh, and oh. Geez. Oh, there we go. I was at that panel as well. There we go. So, uh, yeah, we would absolutely uh, love to hear what you've got going on because uh, uh, as as we frequently talk about uh, on this show during the stream is one of the problems that independent creators and, and publishers like us have is how do we find those people? We believe in our product, right? We believe in the stuff that we're doing, but 
part of it is like it, we're standing on top of a mountain yelling, hey, and no one's hearing us, right? So, well, that's because uh, every, everyone's on the mountain. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people going, hey, hey. Yeah, there's a lot of people up there. It's a, it's a very noisy mountain. <laughs> it's crowded. People there. out there screaming. <laughs> Uh, and no one and, and no one has really found no one has really found the breakthrough title yet. No. Mm. Yeah. And well, that's, I, the, that's that's the thing. They, the I think if there was a if there was a breakthrough title, if there was like another Cerebus, if there was like another Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles, if there was like another thing that could sort of open that floodgate for people, right? Yeah. Then that would happen. But the industry's I, not built that way right now. I am still interested. I, I mentioned this. I can't remember. Did I mention this on the air or up there? Uh, I'm still interested in, 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 in sort of a, a Silverline app, right? Uh, and, and oh, yeah, we you, talked about you, it off. Yeah, you need to poke him again. Um, All right, I, I will poke him again. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I think, and I, I've said this in my class a bunch, I think the, 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 that because of digital, because there's so many question marks about digital, there's so many... Um, intangibles about digital that that um once that gets figured out i believe that we'll see a revolution in comics um uh, I, I do oh, i was going to try to see if i could uh, show you um how i don't know what it let me see in trumps here let's see if i can do trumps because uh i had to go through and work on this um i don't want to stop my cam i want to try to do this I had to work. It's kind of like the directed reading. Y'all know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it moves uh, the panel, the like camera it. moves around yeah. the page. Right. It makes me feel like I'm having a stroke. Yeah. Well, really, <laughs> well really so really I think you that. I think you can choose not to do that. Um let's see here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay, yes. Uh one thing I learned in the first issue uh is I gotta get the better digital. So you so so you see how I now we're looking around with the yeah. click. Okay. Uh, see, I like, I, I'm really old school. Page. I like to see the whole page. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an option. I think that you can, uh, you can do it turn this it off, way. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> I'm just showing, <laughs> I'm showing what's available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't confuse Sorry. me. My brain, no, my brain, unsee, unsee. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there, there is a certain amount of, uh, of, free pages that uh, that you can see for every book. And probably what we'll do, we talked about it and, and we haven't come into any uh, hard and fast conclusions, but probably once we get uh, a couple of issues out, uh, we'll make the first one free. Uh, dang, dangle that out there in front of them. Say, hey, come read this issue. Because uh, digitally, right, it doesn't cost us anything. And and our hope then would be you read this first issue for free and then you you will go by and, and buy Half of issues the two, three, and four. Half of the first issue, yeah. yeah. Like I said, we still haven't come to any conclusions. So <laughs> no, I, think, I think half the first issue and break it a cliffhanger. Yeah, there you uh, go. Actually, yeah. actually, I wouldn't say it's half the first. No, issue. don't even I would break, say it's it's a break, break it a cliffhanger. Break that a spot where it's like, why did they stop there? I gotta keep going. Yeah, that's where you want it. And yeah. if that's half the issue or a third of the issue or whatever, I don't, I don't think that's relevant. I think what's relevant is where you, is where the cliffhanger is. Ah, that's a good plan. So that's my that's my two cents. Yeah, I think so too. Tommy all right, and I, all the Tommies in the Hawaiian shirts agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, that's right. I didn't notice Tommy. Tommy has on a Hawaiian shirt. No, 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 around no, my no, fashion no, sense. No. Let's go, Mickey. Oh, it's like still it. a Hawaiian shirt, even though like it's got yeah. Mickey. Yeah. It is. It's, it's Mickey goes Hawaiian. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. We've been. Uh, my clock tells me we've been an hour and forty three. Holy, uh, holy. Yes, I, I know. Like we're, we're, a really good topic. Man, I I, he her. did, right? And no, Hyper, I'm not sleepy. I'm not trying to ditch you. Although I didn't. I'm sleepy. I want to ditch you. I, I didn't yeah. get my nap in today. I will say that. Um, <laughs> so, like and subscribe to Roland's nap. Uh, that's right. So before we get out of here, <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, uh, this crew from that Silver Line show on Tuesday, everything you needed, everything you need to know to get started writing comics. Uh, Tim and uh, Kasisi talk about the tips and tricks they wish they knew when they had got started. When they got started writing, <laughs> yeah, they needed to switch over from doing because they've been doing a lot you know, of art stuff, here, and then Tim is making up stuff. He's like, well, because he's trying to be, learn the color. Tim is over there. It's going to be frustrating to me to listen I'm to sorry that. Sorry, I didn't help him. 
because <laughs> they were both students of mine. Oh, <laughs> so they're, tell, they're telling they're everybody probably going to get on there and say, I wish I had known this. And I'm going to say, I told you that. <laughs> oh, now you're, you're going to sound like somebody's dad now, Roland. Oh. <laughs> or, or, or you Wednesday. Might say, I didn't tell y'all that. Who would you come up with this crap? <laughs> On Wednesdays, the Whammers is titled Gift Me. The Whammers identify which one character they would want to be gifted to them from the big two and what they would do with that character. Ooh. That's on Wednesday. That's 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, the Tuesday show is 11 p.m. Eastern time. It's for all of you out there on the West Coast. Uh, next Sunday, I have no plan yet. So uh, I don't. we will be here, but I don't know what we'll be discussing. So uh, <laughs> Let's talk about Tom's dollar bin comic. As, as Roberta says, yeah. uh, we'll thank you all for, uh, uh, for, for hanging with us. And sticking with us. And until next week, remember to make mine. Hi, my name is Paul Kupperberg. Make mine silver line. Silver line.